Hey gamers, Maniac here with GameXS.net. I've been liking the amount of likes and retweets I've been getting on my Tales from IT series, and I've been very happy with it, so I felt that deserved another video. So let's have another video, basically. This is Tales from IT. I don't know how many of you guys liked my story about the guy I set up a QuickBooks server for, or I should say QuickBooks multi-user support for, but he called me back for another job, and this is once again another job that I had never ever done before. You see, he had this very large, very expensive Hewlett Packard printer. Now, it's not like the kind of high-end Hewlett Packard printers that you guys would get at your local Staples or whatever that you would pay a couple hundred dollars for, even the really, really nice ones that you'd get. This was a printer the size of a couch. He was using it mostly for things like printing out blueprints and, and, and spreadsheets and things like that on very large paper. This was a drafting printer. Don't get me wrong, it still had a lot of the functions of a normal printer. It still used inkjet cartridges, it still, but it was just very, very big. And it broke on him. Now, printers like this do break. And I was under the assumption that when it came to Hewlett Packard printers, the only way to fix them was to send them back to the manufacturer who would then service them and then send them back to you. But this was the kind of printer that's not that kind of printer, basically. It wasn't an, It was because it was designed for high-end clientele. This was a printer that did have and allow for in-room in service, basically. It could be serviced. It, it, it did have operational service abilities. You could go in and fix it. And in his case, what had broken was its belt. Now, you're probably wondering, like a belt, like a, is that the, basically, in case you're curious, this belt works just like any belt in any type of machine you would be aware of. It's designed to move the print head, the, I should say the full size print head, back and forth over the paper. That's what it's designed for. They cost maybe around $14 or $15 for an end user to purchase. They're very, they're not, it's not an expensive part, but it's the most how do I put this? Because of, because with most belts, basically, because of how it's designed and how the printer was designed, it is one of the hardest parts to get at in order to replace. No joke. You have to take the entire printer apart just to get to the belt, replace the belt, and then put the entire printer back together. And the only reason I knew about this was because that at, as of the time he asked me to do this job for him, he had sent me a video that somebody had produced online. I think it was a company that manufactured high-end third-party belts that lasted a bit lo uh, longer than the regular Hewlett Packard ones. They had gone through the Hewlett Packard manuals. They had the tools that they needed. And um, they were taking apart these. They basically they were taking apart uh, these printers and showed end users who had purchased their belts how to replace them at home without extra help or calling Hewlett Packard. Now, again, as far as I know, Hewlett Packard is fine with this, and I'm pretty certain that his printer was long out of warranty. He had, this was an aftermarket printer for him. I think he had paid. It was used. He paid two two and a half grand for it. I think the printer's new. I think cost at least six grand. So he did certainly get a deal out of it, and it lasted him quite a while. But after taking a look at it and the belt basically going on him, he had to think about, well, okay, this is, he, he figured that there was enough information in the video that he had provided me that he could have done the job on his own. He already went to the Hewlett Packard and bought a new belt. But the issue wasn't that. The issue was he, that would have made him lose a whole day's worth of work when he could have just hired me, have me do the job. And he could continue on working. That was his understanding of it. It's like either he does it, loses a day of work, or has me do it and he can keep working. And just he'd be willing to pay me for the time. So at first I told him, no, I had never worked with stuff like this before. But he convinced me. He's like, no, I got the video. We Go over the video a couple of times and, and, and I'm pretty certain you can do this job. He's like, I think I can do this job. So if I think I can do this job after looking at the video, I'm pretty certain you could do this job. And he and I had a good repertoire. Like I said, I had set up his QuickBooks for him. So he liked me and he wanted me to work with him. And I was more than happy to do it once I had studied the video a couple of times. Again, I had never taken a printer like this apart before. Um, I had diagnosed broken printers but never never repaired one. So I come, I come into his office one day. He gives me the replacement belt and he says, okay, you go to work. Now, like I said... In order to take apart a Hewlett Packard printer this size, it has to be taken out component by component. So I pulled up the video and I'll produce a link on the either 
I'll have a link to this particular video on the bottom of the screen or I'll have a link to the video on my website or something like that when I post up this video on my website. So you can see for yourself just how complicated this job was. I think the, uh, the video itself, like I said, it required specialized tools. Between him and I, we had the specialized tools already to basically start taking this thing apart, no problem. So that wasn't an issue. I had half the tools I needed and he had the other half I needed, so we were, we were good. So I started taking the unit apart and I was doing this very, very, very carefully because I was fairly certain that if I didn't mess around, if I had messed around with this too much, I was worried that I was going to cause further damage to it. And I didn't have the insurance and the liability basically to worry about if I had indeed made this thing worse. So as we were talking and I was taking the unit apart again, I was being very careful about cataloging everything. Um, I told my, uh, I told my, we were talking to my client about, you know, he asked Hewlett Packard to come do it, but Hewlett Packard said they would charge him easily $650 to come in and to replace the job. And so, so basically he considered me a cheaper alternative. Well, I'll take it and, a, and an easier alternative because I lived not too far from his offices. It was in a 15 minute drive at most for me. So we continue to work a couple of hours past. Now, like I said, that video was, how do I put this? If I remember correctly, that video was about 30, 35 minutes or so step by step. It took me a couple of hours just to take the whole unit apart and to get everything in pieces the way that the manual explained. So that off the shelf was telling you just how long it was taking just to get to the belt. It took me hours just to finish disassembling the printer. Finally, I got to the, 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 the printer, finally I got to the printer belt that was in there and I discovered what had happened. The belt inside that printer had exploded. And as I was taking the unit apart, I had realized that there was definitely some aftermarket work that had been done there. There was one or two tab components that were snapped inside of the printer, which told me that likely somebody had replaced the belt that was in there before he even purchased the printer. And likely based upon the damage that I was seeing inside the printer itself, they probably, from what the manual told me, they probably replaced it with some cheap belt or something that didn't last very long. It was probably some, but, but there was just gunk everywhere inside this thing. I took a look at everything inside the printer that looked like it had damage. The, literally the belt was shredded. I am not kidding, but it was more than that. There was just gunk, rubber or some other type of rubberistic residue that was covering most of the internal components. Now, I looked at the motor that was controlling. There was an electric motor with a head that controls the belt. It moves back and forth. It's exactly what you think about when you think about it like an electric DC motor. The thing is, is that it was completely encased, just encased in gunk, probably because the belt had heated up too much when it exploded and it, it had fused itself to the head. Now, I see this motor head and I know it's got teeth on it because the belt is designed to work with teeth and, and the two teeth interlock and that causes the belt to move backwards and forwards. And I looked at all the gunk that was on the, on the motor head and I said, I'm not touching this with my 10 foot pole. I said, I looked at him, I looked at my client and I said, you can touch this, but the liability on this is far too high. I don't want to, you can to scrape this gunk off. I don't want to wreck this. I don't want to wreck this head and I don't want to be liable. It's your, it's your printer. It's your job. You know that, that I'll leave it to you. So he took out a pocket knife and a wire brush and he started cleaning off the motor head. It later turned out that once we uncovered all the gunk that was on it, that that was probably a brass head, which meant that it's pretty tough. I've talked to a lot of electricians who said they've worked with brass headed motors and if it has gunk all over it, steel, you know, you could throw whatever you wanted at it. You're not going to break that thing or at least damage it enough to make it ineffective. But I didn't know that at the time. When they looked at it, they said, no, this is brass. This is high quality. If you, you know, steel brush, pocket knife, that would clean it off just fine. So as I'm re-threading the, um, so basically I take the new belt, I re-thread it into the print head itself, which is basically, I, you have to take the, there, the, the, this print head, like I said, most people would say that nowadays they fuse the print heads into the computers these days. This print head was detachable. You had to take the whole system apart to get to it, but this was the kind of print head that was designed to be removed serviced and there were four print heads one for each uh, cartridge the cartridges and the print heads were separate but this little carriage if you will basically housed all these smaller print heads on site you know basically inside its little cradle you had to detach that from the printer and you had to take the whole printer apart to detach it thread the head through it in a very specific way 
then thread it, uh, reattach it into, slide it back into the printer, um, and then basically thread it back between a pulley wheel, which is held together on one side by a spring, and that took forever for us to figure out how to get it to work because it was damaged in an earlier job before he even purchased it, and threading it back over the head. It took a lot of elbow grease, but we did actually get the belt rethreaded properly, the and the and the wheel and the pulley system all back into place. We got it all back into place, and then I started reassembling it. Now I've been told by everybody, it's like once you've reassembled the printer, make sure to turn it back on and make sure to, to do like a print job or something like that, like a test print to make sure that the head is working. So we turn the printer on and it starts spinning up and it's the head is moving back and forth. The belt is clearly working. It's it's clearly. Uh, doing its thing now there is a small piece of metal it's a very long very thin piece of metal that's housed throughout the back you have to detach that from the from the printer in order to get the uh, basically you have to you have to take enough of it apart in order to basically pull the printer in half in order to get the two pieces in half that basically allows you to slide the print head out in order to service the belt now there's this long strip of metal that's along the back of the printer on the inside. It's protected pretty well because it has to be. It's kind of like a sensor or data ribbon or something like that. I'm not quite certain exactly what it is, but it has very, very, very fine teeth on it, uh, little nodules and stuff. And that's basically the head runs along it. So it knows basically, I think it's an electrical impulse or something along those lines where to basically end it. Now, that we were told don't use any cleaners or solvents on that on that ribbon cable because or that piece of metal ribbon because it can damage the internal workings in which case we'd have to do the job all over again and get a new piece of metal from Hewlett Packard but he insists it was dirty uh, it had residual ink on it and he insisted on cleaning it I told him it's yours you want to clean it that's fine now the now the guy did say you can clean it with a very with a soft non abrasive cloth don't use any solvents don't use any soaps on it just wipe it with a with a with a simple cloth and you should be just fine and he did so he put it all back together uh, put the belt back in everything is working just fine and it, the, the the printer goes into the service station and says I've got a print head error like I said that's not good at least I didn't think it was very good but it's not the worst type of error that you could get on a printer like this. In some of the older, very older printers, probably from printers from back in the late 90s and stuff, or mid to late 90s, if you got a print head error, then you'd simply take out your cartridge and replace it with a brand new one, and basically that was the end of it, because the print heads were built into the cartridges. On a newer printer, which are basically just using ink packs these days, if you have a print head error, you have a broken printer. And the printer either has to be recycled or returned or thrown in the trash, basically. But on a printer like this, it had four uh, it had four print heads, and um, they actually were mass produced. Uh, you could usually you could basically very easily find print heads for this type of printer um, at like Staples and things like that. Basically, they were very they weren't cheap. Like a print head cost like fifty bucks, but it was in the service manual to produce and replace these print heads very easily basically you just tap a button or two on the console it pulls out you know it basically pulls out the print head and you could basically change it right pop it pop out the old one and put in the new one it was not a complicated job to replace a print head on this so after but regardless the the, the head and the belt were moving back and forth no problem the only issue we were having was the print head so i told my client look this is how you replace the print head on the on, on the printer it's a $50 part. It's not the end of the world. I say replace the part. If you still get an error, then my guess is it's probably the ribbon cable or something like that will have to be replaced. And we'll deal with that like you know later on. Or we can talk about this further on. But I'm pretty certain um, simply just changing out that one print head. He had never changed out the print heads on his printer before. So he didn't know. It, it very easily could have been the print, the print head. So... I talked to him. I, t I talked him over with it, and he agreed. Okay, I'll just spend the fifty bucks. I'll go to Staples and I'll get a new print head and I'll replace it. Again, two second job for him. Not that difficult. He didn't need to call me in for that. And he paid me for my time. I took about seven or eight. I think I. I think I paid about seven. He paid me for about seven or eight hours worth of work. Now, in this case, like I said, that because that's how long it took to disassemble, rethread the head. The, you know, clean out the gunk, the gunk or whatever. Rethread the head, put it all back together. It takes seven or hours worth of work. He charged me. I char. I ended up charging for about seven hours because I did. I think I probably took a, a grand total about an hour break, basically just spacing out the time it took to get this thing all apart 
and doing all the troubleshooting. So he paid me for my time, and I later he never called me back to service the printer, but I did later ask him, was changing the printhead, did, did that, because it specifically was just one printhead that was bad. Like I said, that unit had four. It was only one printhead that was bad, and he and, and specifically said which one it was. And he said, oh yeah, I bought a new printhead, I changed it out exactly like you said, and the printer has been working fine ever since. It works just like it's brand new. So that was indeed the problem. There was nothing wrong with it. So just be aware, if you're going to change your, your belt in that type of case, or, or, or change your, your, your printer belt, uh, that kind of thing can happen. You can always come upon, come, especially if your unit's used, you can always come across like issues and things like that that might cause troubleshooting problems. So just be prepared for any troubleshooting you may have to do in the future. But seven hours worth of work to change out that belt. That having been said, I charged him a heck of a lot less than Hewlett Packard would have charged him for it. So, I don't know. A penny saved is a penny earned. I don't know what it is. And, but, but like I said, his printer is still working just fine. So he's got no problems at all. I guess he was happy to spend the money. So, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, tale from my tea. I, I, I'd like to hear more of your comments about this. I still got plenty more stories I could share with you guys. So, until next time, uh, my name is Maniac with GameAccess.net. Take care. Over and out.